Guys, I have no problem showing you how crap I am at something. That, that starts to hurt everywhere. <laughs> oh, that was like knees, lower back, wobbly foot. Yeah. So we are back at Stark's Fitness, back in Bristol. It's another muggy day, but I didn't come in the bike this time, so it's a little better. But it's about to get worse because we're about to try and improve my ever terrible squat. For those that don't know, haven't been in this little loop, I smashed up my left glute med. Uh, I have a bad right foot from fighting. If you've watched the feet videos, you know I've got collapsed ankles and we're repairing that. If I touch your soles, it's gonna be bad. This is gonna be horrendously painful. <laughs> so I stopped squatting. Now this was a personal choice to try and heal, but we're through all that now. We've started the rehab and it's going well and it's time to start improving the squat. So I'm the perfect candidate to show you how we can rebuild the squat from the ground up. And today we're gonna to show you a few simple things that you can immediately put into your routines that are gonna improve your squat from the moment you do them and on going through your training. Now to do this, we're gonna need a little help because I just told you I'm crap at squatting. So the reason we're at Stark's Fitness is to bring in this man. Mr. James Stark, the Tony of the fitness world. The Tony. The Tony. <laughs> We're going to take you through a little bit of soft tissue work and some mobility exercises that's going to instantly improve your squat. And we're when we're talking like instantly. literally do something and see an immediate yeah, improvement immediate in that moment. moment. In that moment, in that session. So something that everyone can do at home. All you need is a hockey ball or a lacrosse ball yep. and just some space to do some mobility work and then your bar. We're going to show you what is wrong with it and they're going to be common problems you'll see and things you need to look at when you're squatting, which is why you have a training partner. Not so that you can sit on your mobile phone or take selfies of each other. No, to watch and help. It's exactly what James is going to do with me today. And then hopefully what we're literally going to see in this session, in this 60 minute session, you're going to score 500 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> And then the next scene will be from hospital. Okay, so it's not gonna be 500 pounds, but what we're legitimately going to do today is take my raw base level that I feel comfortable at as a heavy load, and we're gonna see how much we can improve the squat in just this single session by improving the mechanics. Now you'll see a lot of people using shoes, using belts, using knee wraps. We're not gonna do any of that. We're gonna look at this raw to find as many problems as possible and fix them for you guys to be able to do the same. So stop relying on the equipment. Let's get back to basics and start rebuilding the squat. So obviously before we do anything, we need a start point. Here it is. So I'm gonna jump onto this bar now and just do it raw with no help from James. This is what will be happening on a daily basis. I didn't get the help. Is it compulsory to have to go? Oh, yeah, I would, I would feel good in sure, yeah. Can someone slap me on the back? Yeah. Oh. Let's do five. Like they're done. <laughs> now we're going to try and start edging the weight up and see where it gets to a point where it's a little bit too uncomfortable for me to squat it happily, but it's going to be safe. So basically this is going to be my raw max. It's probably going to be quite depressing. Okay, well that move bit already felt a bit squiffy. See, see James over there just tried to put like another 20 on the side, so he took a 10 off. I know better, you put another 10 on, then you've got three plates. <laughs> so we're doing a safely guessable jump. So we're going to 100, because I think like, it, it will move probably horribly, but it will move and also I might not die. <laughs> That started to hurt everywhere. <laughs> that was like knees, lower back, wobbly foot. Yeah. What do you reckon? What, push it one more? Or I reckon push it a little bit more. That moved a bit over. Yeah. Okay. God damn it. God damn it. Just a little bit more to see. See where the squiffiness comes in. Have you got any of the polystyrene in play? Right there. <laughs> Bottom of the squat, we can work on bracing, just yeah. your breathing brace to make sure that you've got that thrust extension bottom, yeah. and then that will improve that. And we'll coach you through it, and we'll go front weight up. We hope, otherwise, this video is me sucking crap. <laughs> 
Good. Right, where are we starting? So first of all, we're going to just take you through a raw bodyweight squat. So we're going to get you set up your squat, arms crossed, shoulders, elbows lifted. We're going to take you through. Okay, so let's see what depth you've got. Just take it nice and slow. Just take yourself down in five seconds. Straight away, bang, here. What's going on? Rounding off with the upper back, which, okay, we need to do something with the thoracics. Exercise for that, sort of, in a minute. Just do three reps, just so we can have a look at what's going on. Straight away, see ankles. Okay, increase, we can increase dorsiflexion, something we can work with straight away as well. Not doing very well. Let's do one more, let's do one more. Let's do one more. Left knee collapsing in. Okay, so which side do you have your injury? Left side, yeah. Great. He's had an injury to his left side, left knee's collapsing in, needs some activation on the glute, which is going to help rounding the upper back. So yeah. is that tight chest? Or tight upper back? Tight thoracics. Tight, tight thoracics. Generally, a lot of people will get tight in the chest and shoulders, which then pulls them into that rounded position. So which then helps you remember the bar, rocks all the way forward yes, onto exactly. the toes. Yeah. So straight away, guys, go look at yourselves in the mirror, video yourselves, do what I've just done, see if you can point out the same flaws. So we're going to now fix bar position, rounding back, Collapsing knees, ankles. collapsing ankles, and yep. dorsal flexion. Yeah, perfect. Let's go. Normal, crop. you can get these up anywhere. Hard oh, ass. You like can get Amazon, you can get three pounds. Yeah, they're a couple quid. So now we're just going to start off by rolling the plantar fascia of the foot. So the ball's going to go under the sole of one of his feet. He's going to put downward pressure and he's going to roll for 60 seconds. 60 seconds only. Downward pressure, moving it around the sole of the foot. Okay, as much pressure as you can. If his face is like that and it's hurting, that's a good sign. If it hurts, push harder. Okay, 60 seconds, off you go. Jeez. And I'm trying this as well, so he's not going to cut it short. He's going to do 60 seconds exactly. Let's get that downward pressure, let's drive down for the ball and make it hurt. To make sure you do this on a hard floor. How are you doing, mate? How long? <laughs> halfway, over halfway, you've got 20 seconds. Five, four, three, two, and switch straight onto the other foot. You should be doing this every day. Every day. This should be done every day. Every morning, it should be part of your morning routine. Always, before always sport. before. Always before training. So you want it in your gym bag. Yeah, exactly. In your gym bag, every time before you train, down. But like I say, if you've got longer at home, then you just put more pressure down through you, spend longer on each foot. So and if you're halfway. a single guy going to the gym trying to pick up women, do this in the changing room. <laughs> Four, three, two, one. Okay. Next part, we're going to look at the gastro. So we're going to look at this big muscle on the back here. God gave me no reason to gift me with muscle below this point right. for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> so you're going to place the ball into the back of the car, you're going to cross okay. one leg over the other and you're going to roll around through it. Oh, right. I know okay. this one. Right. So cross the other leg over, just push that one over the other side, this one over the top, more pressure, you're going to push down with this leg, you can yeah. relax your foot that you roll into so it actually gets into oh, the car. Because okay, yeah. most people will do that straight away, they pull their toes up, which then takes the, the, the muscle yeah. for a stretch and you can't get deep into it. So, oh. yeah. And if you find it, this is actually a little trick, so soft tissue release technique, if you find find your worst point on that car, okay? Yeah. Push down, now pull your toes up towards you. Yeah. Okay, so and now release it again, push it down harder, and it gets even oh, deeper. Yeah. Shit, it gets worse. Yeah. So it gets even deeper, so, so you, take, you take your muscles through that stretch, and then as you release, you take the hot water and get deeper in. literally like trigger point massage. Yeah, therapist's thumbs. Just yeah, that's it. exactly what it feels like. That's horrendous. Look, my toes curly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've talked about this as well, being positively critical with yourself. Finding all these bad things is not a bad thing, it's a bloody great thing because it means you can immediately start improving things. Okay, last one, we're going to move on. So we're going to look at your glutes. You've had an injury in your glutes in the past. Yeah. Whether you have an injury or not on your glutes, getting into the piriformis, which is that deep glute muscle, is important. And again, the lacrosse ball, hot ball is perfect for that. Get under the glute, yeah. get the weight. Again, let this knee bend, let the knee relax into the floor, so the muscles okay. relax into the Oh, I was doing this worse, I was doing it like this. So. Yeah, once you find that point, you yeah. can take your leg into that stretch, and then yeah. release it, and then again, the knee back yeah. in. You're then moving the fascia, yeah. moving the muscles. It's going deep, going deep, deep, deep. Right, just trust me when I tell you, this ball's going into both butt cheeks for like another two minutes, so we'll see you in a minute. Two. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, if we wanted to, we can measure your dorsal flexion moment. So let's go in line with the post. So here, drive straight. Still wants to twist, doesn't it? Yeah, that's good. Just, just, just. sounds good. Ugh. So this distance here, his legs is current. 
what we would call is dorsiflexion distance. Okay, yeah. so this is something you can measure, you can to improve, that's why you're using a, a foot reference. So all we're going to do to improve it is we're going to work through a, a, a short mobility of going through the range. So you look, you're going to put pressure, you're going to move in, and then you're going to move out of the range. Yeah. Hand on thigh, you're going to push through the range. Yeah. Get the full range, hold it for a second or so, and then ease back out of the range. Big range. Just work for 10 reps. Just come here, watch this. Right, if I don't concentrate, watch how it wants to warp outwards. Can you see all that out of alignment? It's got the foot's here and the knee's over here. So I have to bring that knee in line and drive it over the foot. And as you work in, focus on pulling your toes towards your shins at the same time. So okay. you're using the anterior, anterior tip. So by doing this, it's just going to increase that range. It's going to warm up his ankles up. So just before you squat, this is the perfect exercise to do before you do squat. This is going to stabilise you at the base of the move. Yeah. Where are we up to now? Thoracics. We're just getting going and then uh, Lex said he's a, bit, a little bit feeling tight for your hip flexors. Yes, which massive. most people are, so we're going to go straight down into an exercise. Straight into this kind of half kneeling position. We're going to push forward by activating the glute, so you open yeah. up from the hip. Hand behind the head on the same side and then we're just going to look to rotate up and away at the same time and just work through there for five repetitions. Okay. Hand behind the head yeah. and then just look to rotate up the elbow just so you feel that extra stretch down through the hip. Pull, pull, so all the way down there. Just where it feels it, stop. Don't do this. No. Pointless. And just looking to keep the glute nice and active and strong to keep the hip in the extension there. Feel that opening up a bit more? Yeah. All here. Yeah. Nice. And at the same time, what this is going to do is just start to actually mobilise his thoracics as well. So which we, we saw that we're rounding off slightly tight when he was squatting. So just start to help when you're looking to loosen up the thoracic spine, rotation is one of the best things to do. So we noticed that in your squat, you were rounding off slightly. We all know that in society, most people, especially those because of mirror weights, get tight through the pecs, get tight yeah. through the chest. That then pulls them to rounded, their thoracics get nice and rounded off as well. That position. Right. You're out on a weekend day, <laughs> fuck it. <laughs> so we're going to look at using rotation to open up through the thoracics and get extension, but we're going to do that to get a double whammy because we know that your hips yeah. are tight as well. So we're going to get you in down to lunge position and work on your hips and thoracic rotation in one go. We double dip it. Right, this is what we're going to do side by side. You can see genuinely like how tight and messed up I am compared to James, but he's going to talk you through this one first. Yeah. I don't think a lot of you will have seen this. Okay, so we're going to go down into a press up position. We're going to step forward with our left leg. Okay, so you're looking for a high leg, not too wide, and you're looking for the back leg to stay nice and straight. So you're going to stretch through the yeah. right to my groin. Yeah. Yeah. And then you're going to get the elbow down inside without letting that back knee collapse. Keep that back knee off and get okay. the elbow down in there. I can't. Okay, can you get the forehead and your nose down there or not? Yeah. <laughs> can you do that? Yeah, that's yeah. ridiculous. So you're looking to pull down into the okay. into, into lunge, is you're then going to come up, you're going to push through the bottom arm, yeah. you're going to look to rotate as far as you can. But just focusing on the mid back. Push through the shoulder, through the ground, get that rotation. As you're doing that, you're getting this rotation through the thoracics, but you're also getting a lovely stretch straight through that hip. Should my glutes also be burning through this? <laughs> Why are my glutes always burning? <laughs> this, what we want to do is not let this back knee drop. And when we're coming up, we want to not let the shoulder dip in like that. We want to constantly push through that shoulder and keep it elevated. So that when we finish the movement, we look like this and not like this or like this. Dude, I only can only get to here and we're going to look to improve on that. Doesn't matter. Here, pushing through the shoulder, reaching through, shoulder, 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 reach, and then come back through. Not easy. Yeah, I mean, we have to have these start points. You have to be honest with yourself. And this is the whole point of this series is going to be showing the start point and getting somewhere better. And, and you know, that's the only thing you can do. Don't, don't let your ego stop you being able to improve. And there's one more thing we need to look at before we do this, which will solve a lot of people's problems straight off the bat. It's hand and bar position. Yes. So hands, obviously most Olympic bars got these two rings. Yep. I would generally say some, your little finger is somewhere in between those two rings. Uh, so the common place people will put the bar... On top of the head. Yeah, yeah. up here. So you can see here, it's right up on the base of Lex's neck. Okay, right off sat from the traps. This here is just going to push his head position forward and put way too much pressure on his cervical spine. So one, to save the party mullet getting caught on the bar, <laughs> where we want to see it most commonly, it's going to be more comfortable for most people. It's going to be just mid up trap. Here, sat right on, on that shelf. Muscle. So you see the rear delt uh, loading the bar is on the trap, so it's on the meat and not the bone. And then one step further, if you can manage this, 
just here, isn't it? Yeah. So low, you've got low that's bar a low bar position. So this this bar position is going to make your squat a bit more hip dominant, though. So yeah. it depends on how your hips are. Having a low bar position will make it more hip dominant. When you do the low bar, as you go down, your body tends to be further forward yeah. in a forward, yeah. more of a forward yeah. lean, yeah. Yeah. rather than with that mid bar position, where where you're going to be a little bit more upright, going straight up and down. Exactly. But we want really the upper rear delts and traps do what it needs to be. Get it off the back of that neck. Right, so on to the imminent doom of Lex. And if this is my final video, mum, blame Wilkes and James. Find them, www.insurance.com. <laughs> but we're gonna strip it back down. We're not gonna be stupid. Take it back down to 80. Then we're gonna build back up, back up to where we were at that, what were we on, 110? 110. 110, yeah. And then uh, we'll see if we can surpass it. So yes, let's have a quick check. Now obviously you're not gonna be able to tell much when I lift this 80, but I can tell you going down on this felt completely different to when I first started cold and unwarmed up. That is basically because we've opened up all the hips, opened up all the hip flexors, we've got the glutes firing and engaging, and I'm more aware of my error points that I started with, like the rounding back, so I'm obviously thinking about that and avoiding it. So 80 went smooth, we did five reps on that to see where I was going. 100, no bother whatsoever. Fired that back up, it felt strong, it felt good, it felt fast. It just looks like there's more room around your hips. I genuinely feel free, like when I go down, there's I feel like it's a weirdest sensation. My knees have got no pain, and I feel like I fluidly move through the knees now, rather than feeling that load transfer onto them. Uh, now, don't get me wrong. This isn't feels doesn't feel any easier in terms of having a weight across my traps that aren't used to it. I haven't done any of this for 12 months. It's still it's unnerving, unracking the bar and having that load on you. So you're still gonna have to go through all that. We're not we're not gonna magically make you, you know, Samson. But the fact is, your range of movement is gonna get smoother and stronger. So we're back up. To where we were at on the last one, was it? Well, yeah, this yeah. is the same one. Yeah. Same as last one now. So let's see how much this moves in difference. I'll try and do a side by side with this one and we'll see. Now last time, the reason this felt so ugly is because it felt wobbly and unstable. So the difference we're gonna see here is, look at the bottom of the rep, zero knee wobble, zero rounding of the upper body, and it moved a little faster. <laughs> Winner. Switching up that five for a 10, so we're going up 10 kilos, or 22 pounds. Now look. If this works with a better range of movement, that is an absolute win. I'd already won moving that same weight better. That's your win. So not progression isn't always, I've added more weight, woo hoo. Progression is, I've done that weight better. And that is absolutely fine. A lot of you guys are gonna be at that point for a little bit of a while. You will naturally get stronger and better at lifting heavier weights. So don't push yourselves too far too quickly and break down everything that you've worked so hard to repair. So here we go, weight is up 10 kilos, 22 pounds, and uh, we're gonna see if this moves well. This is gonna be, this is a win. If, if we've, got, we've got more weight on, this is a win. Slow, controlled negative, no knee wobble. A little bit of a slight pause there, whilst I had to re-engage, because obviously not squatting for so long, but it moved. Yeah, it was a little struggling. Yeah. What do you reckon? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? But if you've not had that load on your back for a little while, no, then it's, it's gonna be. But at the end of the day- You don't tend to have loads on me very often. <laughs> uh, on, the, on the way back up from the squat, um, just lost a tiny bit of brace. Yeah, definitely. I don't, don't think it was the, the hip or the ankle, it was just right. a little bit of bracing in the upper body. Yeah. And again, you've used the breath to brace the gait. So a lot of people don't know why they're using the brace. Yeah. So you're looking to take the air in, fill the diaphragm to then give you a vacuum and actually push the gait. And that's how you brace through the core. You just lost that tiny bit of brace as you're pushing back up. But the power was there. That is definitely one of the biggest things with squat is your confidence in going down. Yes. If you're confident you're gonna go down and come back up, yeah. you're okay. If you have that wobble, which is usually at the bottom where you think, will it go? Don't doubt yourself. No. Because no. the worst case is it doesn't go, you just drop that. Yeah. Is, it, is that the worst case scenario, Lex? We'll see. Think of, think of the downward movement as a, think of it as a pull down. Think about okay. pulling down into the ground as opposed to just lowering. Oh, okay. So in my head when I'm squatting, I focus on thinking, right, I've got to pull this weight down and then I push pull it down, back up. Pull down, push Rather than thinking I'm just going to drop down and then push up. Okay. Because if you drop, you automatically in your head you lose tension. Yes. You think about pulling, you maintain tension because it's, it's, you're, you're pulling into the floor. Perfect. Yeah. Nice. One more, let's try one more. Yeah. One more. Five. Five. One more. Yes. Yeah. So what, 130? Yeah. So that's 260, that's 286 pounds. Yeah. 286 pounds. It sounds a lot, doesn't it? It's not really though. People smash this every day, but for me this is gonna be a great improvement. I genuinely remember this being one of my maxes before I completely broke. When I had when I was wearing belt, shoes, and uh, really doing it. So okay, we're gonna think about pulling, we're gonna think about going back up and not staying down underneath the bar. Nice big breath. 
Okay, let's just rewind that and take a look what happened there. Right, so just going to slow this down. I braced and took a breath, but here you can see I'm not pulling on the bar. You can see it because my hands are facing forward. That was mistake one. So if you look, you can physically see me breathe and brace here. But then as I go down, I'm not pulling on the bar, which means my back is not engaged now. You can see my hands are facing forward, so they're actually pushing away from the bar. So as I go to lift and drive, you can see I shift backwards. So now as a result, I'm unstable and start to go off balance and I have to choose to ditch the bar. And that's not where it ends because when we ditch the bar, one bad thing and one good thing happens. Bad thing, party mullet got caught. Good thing, quite an improvement in dorsal flexion there. <laughs> That's why I couldn't come back up. I was attached to the bar by the party mullet. <laughs> well, there we go. <laughs> it doesn't get much more real than that. that. That was a fail point. And maybe it was because, you know, we've done a fair bit today. We've done a lot of building up reps without any real build-in sets. Yeah. As a rule, what you'd want to do on this is a, a good number of kind of those three to five sets on the lower weights, yeah. building up to your singles. What you've established though is your probably current 1RM as well. Yeah, which is, yeah. Which, you know, 1RM training is horrible. Yes. But you need it to basically improve. So yes. you know what you're working from. Yeah. So we've, we've established that 120 you did fine, 130 is too much, maybe somewhere in the middle. Yeah, if I put the two and a half on, yeah. we might have been all right. So 125 would have been where your 1RM is currently. Yeah. Then you build your percentages, then you build your strength back up. Yeah. Great. But in terms of Absolutely. your awesome. 120, perfect. In terms yeah. Of and even, even failing on that, at no point was it a failure because I felt pain in my hip, pain in my knee. No just, pain in my just hip, no. Just, just the, I didn't have that mechanical strength to come no, back up. No. But this is what I wanted to show. That guys, I have no problem showing you how crap I am at something. I want to be not perfect at things, so I can show you guys how to improve because that's all we can do most of the time is look at what's wrong and improve it. So I think, I think we've covered everything. Yeah, sweet. That has been, uh, that has been the first step of this Stark Enterprises improve your body. <laughs> Iron Man, we, we will make you into Iron Man slowly but surely. So we, this is a squat. We'll come back to this, obviously revisit it. Yeah. Next up, we're going to be doing some bench press work, bicep yeah. work, yes. and deadness. Yes. I'm going to carry on working on your ankle. Yes, mobility. <laughs> and we'll do the mobility. So there you go. If you've enjoyed this, let us know. If you've made it this far, let us know in the comments what you've liked about it. Anything else you want to know, James will be checking the comments. I will be checking the comments. So we'll answer your questions. And let us know what you want to see. This is the biggest thing. What are you having problems with that you want us to cover here in depth? And we will do it. We will rebuild you from the ground up just like I'm having to. So thank you very much. Absolute pleasure. Always. And we will see you in the next video. Hopefully not with a big bruised back. God, that bloody hurt. <laughs>